Hello everyone, thank you for checking out my YouTube channel today, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. I am your host, as always, Nick Barksdale, and today we are joined once again by Robin Reich. So we're not really sure. Um, this is the kind of thing that we, we don't really have good records of. Um, you know, ordinary people typically aren't literate, they don't write. Um, or if they do, their writings aren't saved. Um, so we don't see a lot of how day-to-day -day religious practice changes. Just from a practicality sense, I mean, the Black Death in Europe, there's a good chance that people were just staying inside because they were sick, or because someone near them were sick, or because they were afraid. Um, and on top of that, medieval religious practice was not necessarily as rigorous as we expect it to be. So, you know, your sort of average person probably didn't go to church every week um, within the Christian community. Muslim practice, I think, probably had a little bit less of uh, a change because there is more Muslim practice that's individual um, in the Middle Ages. You know, Christianity doesn't really get into that, like, personal prayer um, practice until after the Protestant Reformation. So, Christians before the Protestant Reformation typically don't pray alone in their homes. They typically go to a church, they go to a service or a mass. Um, Muslims, on the other hand, traditionally, because there is a stipulation of prayer multiple times a day on your own, and there is a sort of setup for that, it's a lot easier to kind of isolate in prayer, um, mm -hmm. especially because Islamic cities are set up with um, the the minarets and the muezzins calling to prayer, and so you hear the call to prayer, you don't have to actually go to the mosque, and the only time that Muslims might actually go into the mosque or expect to go into the mosque on a regular basis is for a Friday prayer, and that's only the men, and so that might have been a, a kind of factor in spreading the disease. We don't know if that changed, um, but it strikes me that the, there probably wasn't a big shift in, in practice there. Interestingly, the interaction between religious practice and, and plague for Judaism is a little bit different. Um, I didn't talk about this at all, so this is a good point to bring up. So Judaism has built into it these hygiene practices that other medieval religions don't in the same way. Um, Islam does have a, um, a couple of hygiene expectations around like certain times that you have to wash yourself before you pray, but it's not kind of as strict. Judaism has a very strict rule about washing your hands, washing your body um, before and after prayer, <laughs> before you eat, um, a lot of um, hygiene around the preparation of food. So there are just these kind of fewer points of, of contact that are likely to spread the disease. And so as a result, Traditionally, the story is that Jews, Jewish communities were less affected by the Black Death than Christian communities were in Europe, and that this became this kind of source of anxiety between these two groups, especially because Jews typically lived in kind of small inset communities on the edge of, of Christian villages and towns. And so, you know, these rumors would start that the plague was Jews poisoning the wells in the Christian side of town, um, or that it it was some weird, like, Jewish devil-worshipping ritual um, kind of thing. And, and um, so we do have stories of uh, Jewish persecution that is in response to the plague, this kind of vain attempt to blame the disease on someone. And so they pick Jews because Jews are a little bit less... Uh, affected by it. Um, I think, though, that probably that is a bit overblown because um, Jewish practice is actually a lot more congregational than um, uh, than Christian or Muslim practice. So I, I think that there is a good chance that despite all this hygiene, Jews were actually uh, experiencing the plague as much or more than other people, that it was it was going through those communities pretty quickly. 
Um, one thing that you brought up that made me very uh, – it kind of popped in my head while you were talking about medieval Islamic responses. And really – so we know that the Black Death could be transmitted by coughing and a variety of other um, ways basically. And we know that in the medieval Islamic world, not only do people wear coverings a lot, but also because of how hot it is, they are really bundled up. Do we think that in a way this could have assisted in not letting it spread as bad as it did, say, in Europe? So I actually wouldn't put too much um, uh, stock in that because what we think of as the sort of typical Muslim dress now is pretty much how everyone dressed in the Middle Ages. Um, and that's not to say that Muslims today dress, you know, in an old fashioned manner, um, but rather that they have taken a tradition and continued with it in the same kind of vein. Um, the point is that Everyone in the Middle Ages wore head coverings. Most women um, covered their necks, if not part of their faces. Um, everyone covered their hair. Um, this was just across the board. I think that, I don't know that it, that it would have prevented or aided the spread um, either way. I, I think that, you know, when we're talking about using face coverings to help prevent the spread of the disease right now, what makes that work is that the face coverings are changed regularly um, and that they're washable. Either they're disposable or they're washable. Um, I, I wrote a whole piece on disinfectants and how people come up with ideas of, of what makes something clean. And this is actually a kind of common misconception about um, using modern disinfectant or, or um, prevention devices like rubber gloves and face masks, um, that we kind of forget that the thing that's dirty is not your body. You know, the, the point is not just to prevent your face from getting in contact with something or your hands from getting in contact with something. It's to take whatever comes in contact with your body and leave it away from your body. So the gloves have to come off every single time you use them and be changed with new gloves. The gloves have to be um, impermeable. They can't be fabric. They have to be rubber or, or latex or something like that. Um, the same way masks, um, are more about stopping saliva from leaving your mouth. It's that it's infected and you don't realize it and getting into someone else's mouth or eyes. Um, then it is about stopping anything from coming into your face. Um, and so the reason that works is because if you have a paper mask, it's one that you take off every time you're done with with a task. So if you go to the doctor, you notice the doctor always throws away their mask and their gloves at the end of your, your appointment because that's your contaminated space. They're not gonna take that to their next patient. Um, for a fabric mask, you have to wash it every day. It does not function well if you don't. So with medieval um, dress practices, people are wearing these coverings and they do wash them frequently, but they don't necessarily wash them every day. Um, this, is a, this is a big thing with medieval hygiene. You know, they did think of their bodies as kind of dirty. You know, you think of sweat building up. Um, everyone typically wore um, an under covering layer, like a linen um, undershirt or chemise or some sort of long garment. And that layer, the closest thing to your body, did get washed very frequently. And it's part of why it was white. It was easy to see if it was dirty um, and it would get boiled <laughs> and, <laughs> and soaked in lye, and, you know, really thoroughly washed and then put back on. Your other clothes may never get washed, but that did. Um, so that's sort of the extent of how people were protecting themselves using clothing and coverings. But in terms of like covering their faces or anything related to their religious practice, it probably did not do anything either Interesting. way. Interesting, because I've seen that pop up quite a bit on social media as well as far as questions go. So I'm glad we could clarify that. Yeah.